Thanks to Adorama for sponsoring this episode. They have a couple new wireless lavalier sets on their website that are really interesting, especially for SLR shooters. The road is simple. It just works, and it sounds really good. Plus, the range is about 100 meters, runs on AA batteries. We used it all over QuakeCon and had a lot of success with it. We're going to use that, and we're also going to use the Sennheiser AVX ME2 while we're in Germany. Now, this one is all metal construction. It's made in Germany, has XLR, and it comes with an adapter so that you can plug it right into your digital SLR. So both of these units are really interesting and attractive, especially for shooters uh, with SLR cameras. Both these units are uh, currently on sale, and they're new, so go ahead and check them out just by clicking on the screen or... Uh, Click on the link in the description. Hey, do you guys remember this thing? Yeah, I'm going to do another unboxing, except this time I'm going to unbox the box. I'm sure there's an Intel marketing executive right now in the audience going, Oh God, oh God, he's off script, he's off script. What's, no, 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 take him down, take him down, take him down. But it's cool because we're going to do it anyway because I don't even care. This thing is sort of a lot of fun from a marketing perspective. We're going to talk about like Intel marketing a little bit and why this is kind of interesting that they've done this but i'm more interested in the innards and guts of this thing so like honestly the like how they put this together and sort of you know the people that they're trying to reach and you know sort of how that works is more interesting to me than uh than sort of the contents so i think this is really interesting you know this is not the first time that intel has done something like this um, they had the sort of space capsule thing last time, and that was kind of interesting. And the only other sort of marketing campaign that I can remember that Intel did before that was the uh, snowboarding CPU campaign, which totally did not make any sense to me. Oh, so it's like the snowboarding thing where it's like, oh, we're going to go snowboarding and all these snowboarders and win a sn snowboard by buying a Core i7 processor. I totally didn't get that. But this, this is actually more up my alley and maybe indicates that the marketing people are sort of more in tune. And so that's one of the things that's kind of exciting about this is because maybe just maybe somebody somewhere gets it and it's like, oh yeah, it's a culture of makers and we need to empower them to actually make things and do things with their hands. It's an entire generation of people maybe possibly that are doing things with 3D printers and are doing cool things with software. Because a lot of the time we've got the hardware, the hardware exists, it's just a matter of the software catching up. I mean, you know, like the Intel Edison is that tiny little dual core x86. And that thing will give a Pentium 4 a run for its money, which is a desktop computer. And that thing is tiny, there's not much to it. And not to mention Intel, I mean, there are other vendors as well. You know, Atmel really pioneered the whole flash-based 8-bit AVR. I mean, historically it was Motorola and Microchip and a couple other companies that absolutely dominated that space. And then Atmel came out of nowhere with their 8-bit AVR with the RISC architecture, which later became integrated into the Arduino because it was such an amazing CPU. Some smart person somewhere was like, hmm, let's build a platform around that. And thus was born the Arduino from the Atmel AVR. And so let's do a teardown and take a look at the inside of this. All right, so on the inside here, we've got six AA batteries, a hobby servo, looks like a magnetic sensor for knowing, I think, when it's closed or not. Looks like Intel had a custom printed circuit board manufactured that's an interface for the Arduino Mega 2560. Hmm, that's interesting that whoever did this didn't use an Intel Edison. That suggests that maybe it wasn't designed by Intel staff or maybe that Intel, if Intel staff were involved, maybe they were uh, saying the agnostic thing of, well, there's a lot of stuff out there for Arduino, not as much for Edison as I'm finding. You can run Linux on Edison, but we don't need to put Edison's in here. That, that would not be a thing. So they put an Arduino in here with a custom circuit board. There's also an interface here for, looks like a daughter board for an SD card. And in our case, it's an eight gigabyte SD card. So that's kind of interesting. And then the button sound and all the other stuff comes from this PCB, which is probably lovingly hand soldered by somebody. So the thing you have to consider, you know, even though this is a marketing piece and marketing, you know, the people in the audience are like, marketing is inherently evil. It's like, well, the Brene's marketing where it's trying to manipulate your brain is inherently evil, but just doing something cool and being like, hey, I made this cool thing, or I made this thing and I think it will solve a problem that you have and I'll legitimately think it'll make your life easier. I don't know which this is, but I'm just sort of pointing out that, hey, there's something interesting going on here and we can sort of look at the internals of it. So the other thing that's interesting about maker culture is that we want to sort of take something and make it our own and sort of customize it and do fun, interesting things with it. So in my case... But it's a mystery, and I don't like mysteries. Give me a bellyache, and I got a beauty right now. I've taken this and sort of modified the stuff that it does, so... Program complete. Enter when ready. And then we're basically, you know, good to go. <laughs> what I've done is modified the SD card in here 
to actually have sounds from Star Trek because I'm a crazy person and why not? I saved the Intel sounds. That's totally cool. I've got them. But hey, this thing's got eight gigabytes of storage, which is way more than every single Atari 2600 cartridge ever had. Like if you took all of the Atari 26 games that were ever made, it's not even going to be a gigabyte, let alone, let alone eight gigabytes. So that's sort of interesting to see how far that we've come. So in terms of the postmortem, what, what sort of went wrong? It's like, well, I'll give you a hint. And so, having done a few things with glue in my time, the glue that was used on this was basically a kind of super glue. And the super glue is a reactive type of glue, meaning that it reacts with certain kinds of plastic. It's good when you're working with a porous material like porcelain um, or certain other kinds of plastic, uh, depending on, on what you're doing, that the glue will actually absorb and react with chemically the plastic. And that's what's happened in this case, but for a deleterious effect as opposed to a good effect. The, the type of glue that super glue is basically forms a crystalline structure and it is very, very brittle. It, it can't handle a lot of shock. And so even though this thing fully glued together properly uh, won't let the batteries fall out, if there's any bending or flexing of the case, especially like if it's in a, you know, even in a padded box, no amount of padding is going to do anything as far as inertia goes. And so when you drop this thing, the glue in this is going to shatter. And that's exactly what happened when this was put together. The glue basically shattered. And so uh, it was sort of dead on arrival and I had to sort of piece it back together. So that was a thing. But that's not a big deal. I mean, I, th I still think that the people that put this together should be commended because it feels like a maker made this. Like in working with this and looking at this and sort of sort of lovingly hand put it together. I would love to know who made this. If you made this, you know, reach out and actually let me know. You know, I can sort of really appreciate that this was basically made by hand. Some of the buttons, like that one clicks really easy, but like the ones that are really wrong up here in the corner, they're not as easy to click. Again, owing to basically a maker made this, which I think is really really sort of cool. It's cool that Intel is doing this kind of thing on a maker project. It's kind of innovative that Intel is saying, okay, we'll give a maker a chance to help us with a marketing campaign. And so I think this went really well, especially contrasted to, you know, the whole snowboard thing, which is like, oh, you get a free snowboard. So who cares? I don't, nobody needs a free snowboard. That doesn't even make any sense. But they could have used a different glue. In fact, the, the right kind of glue to use here, I think would have been shoe goo. So shoe goo is a really neat glue. It's uh, sort of basically glorified silicone not really but sort of kind of it'll fill in the gaps and the imperfections here it doesn't really react chemically with the plastic and so it's not going to warp the plastic that's the other thing that happened so the glue reacted with the plastic the plastic warped a little bit and there's a lip on the case and so even when it's unlocked the lip would hang a little bit below the edge and so even though it was unlocked it was sort of difficult to slide it out because the plastic had warped and the lip had fallen into the case and so that was sort of difficult to get it out but shugu would basically form uh, and sort of fill in the crack between the top and, and the other part. And depending on what you were doing, you could actually smooth that out with your finger or a popsicle stick or whatever and basically get to a point. The other thing is that that kind of glue is sort of useful from a structural standpoint. It also will deal with shocks really well because it's designed to be used on shoes. Yeah, you can glue your soles back onto your shoes. So it's made for a lot of punishment. It's made to deal with a lot of compression and expansion. And so shugu would have probably been the perfect glue for this thing to hold it together. With shugu, uh, there would have been a little bit of movement. I probably also would have Velcroed in the batteries. And so like the way that you would do that is you would sort of drill a hole in the PCB or design the PCB with a hole or a slot or something around where the, the batteries are and just use some Velcro to hold the batteries in just to be absolutely sure. Because Velcro is an amazing piece of material about dealing with shocks and vibration and that sort of thing. So if you're going to build a robot and there's all kinds of stuff you got to worry about on the robot, there's vibrations, you know, it's going to go sentient and kill all humans or whatever. You really want to Velcro in the batteries if you want the batteries to stay there. It'll, it can really handle a lot of shocks and other stuff. And that is if you're not going to solder the batteries in because that's the best way to go. But if you're not going to solder it, Velcro is another option. And Velcro is good for any sort of mechanical attachment where soldering or welding doesn't make any sense. So cool. I, I sort of wish Intel had posted the source code on GitHub for whatever is running on the uh, Arduino Mega. I'll just have to settle for manipulating the files on the file system on the eight gigabyte flash card. But all in all, I really just sort of wanted to share my thoughts on this. Not, not really anything to do with marketing, not really anything to do with, you know, getting more eyeballs in front of this thing. If you want to help Tech Syndicate out, you can click the link to Intel, which is what they ask us to do. Uh, is to sort of share the link and make sure that everybody knows how to do the link. But I really just thought that this was interesting what they had done. And also the previous version of this was like a space capsule thing. We didn't get one of those, but it was sort of another 
thing where they sort of put something special together and that's that's interesting and that went really well and so i think that intel should continue on this path less of the snowboarding thing but i would like to see more stuff like this in marketing in general not people sending stuff but more companies reaching out to enthusiasts in their industries and working with the enthusiasts to do something that makes sense and doing something for makers makes sense and they totally could have worked 3d printing in this so the little thing that holds the servo here because the servo is the thing that actually moves and locks and unlocks the box they totally could have 3d printed the thing that goes here for the servo and that would have worked out really well instead it's this sort of handmade thing that wasn't glued all that well probably hot glue or or more shoe goo would have uh sort of done the trick there interestingly they did use some kind of a silicone glue for the batteries so there's that but sort of on the inside you can see the tool marks and how they put it together and, and sort of how it all came together but all in all this is really cool i really like this this is this is makers making things for other makers i think and so all in all pretty neat i like it i'll keep it forever probably it's definitely an interesting piece of kit so i think i'm going to continue to find william shatner quotes and star trek computer noises to put on this thing because, uh, you know, it's, I don't have it like I don't have anything better to do. No, I really should not be wasting time doing that. But I'm totally going to go do that right now. And so if you want to hang out on the forums and, and uh, do that, just let me know. And if, if you're an Intel marketing executive and you're sort of reeling in terror somewhere, well, I'm Randy and I'm signing out and I'll see you later. <laughs>